right so now we have learned so far how to write sql queries how to hold the data uh, inside the list variable and how can you use for each loop to iterate through the list variable to see the data inside it right in this video we will see how can you do dml operations through the apex well salesforce is a database where you store the data in different different objects and you as a developer have to do a lot of automations through the backend and when it comes to the automations through the backend it is all apex right we have learned how to use process builder workflow and flows right to do the backend automations but it's not the that every time you'll be using those configuration there'll be a situation where you have to use apex code as well we will see in a different um, a video where i'll try to compare the um, situations or the requirement which can be done through configurations and there are a few requirements we will discuss where you have to write apex code right so now when you write apex codes more or less end of the day what you'll do is insert update and delete your apex code will go and insert the data will update the data and will delete the data right these are the major operations that we'll do with the help of salesforce apex coding the dml operation which we call data manipulation language and which is nothing but insert update delete we can do it with just one statement called insert or update or delete it's very easy here for an example what we will do we have been seeing the same code since last three videos right we will actually try to update the account number so if you remember i have two sql test records okay where there is no account number got it there is no account number here also i'm going to write the apex code here which will help me to find the sql test record and which will update the account number from something to something all right now this code is so far fetching all the records all the account records see this is a, a recommendations as much as possible the filtration you have to use in the sql query itself like if you see here i actually have fetched all the records and in my sql query and my for loop i'm trying to find if the name is sql test or not there's a wrong here right you cannot do it you can do it technically there is no problem when you have less data but think in this way okay suppose you have one lakhs of account and you have only two sql test data i mean the name is equal to sql test right so instead of fetching all one lakhs of record here and write your for loop which will iterate one lakhs of time and gives you um i mean we will be learning about something called governor limit salesforce has a lot of limits okay you cannot simply write whatever code you want to write correct so this is like unnecessary burden that you're putting inside the system so instead of fetching all records that you have in account object why can't you filter the sql query and fetch only the needed data in this way your query will fetch only the needed data and your for loop will not run multiple times though if the for loop is running like thousands of time it doesn't take so much of time in just few seconds few like microseconds by the way but still the best practice is always write the sql query by putting a lot of where clause like where uh so where name is equal to sql test and account number not is equal to null and so and so right write all the where clause that's good and make sure you fetch only the needed information through your sql query so that unnecessarily you don't make this for loop run for many times all right that's something that you have to take care so the rule is sql query will have as many as possible the filters like where clause to fetch the needed data now we will go ahead with the same code that we had written so far this sql query again is trying to fetch all the account data and uh, it is actually checking here if the name is equal to test sql test or not so here i'm going to go and check if the account number is null if it is null then do something all right so how do you put this uh, how do you put this in if clause is like this okay if same account dot account variable which is this dot see when you put dot it will you'll get all the uh, fields okay account number that's the field right and i have to check if it is null how do you check how many equals do you have to put here if you are checking something you remember double equals to 
so you are checking if account number equals to equals to what null null means you have to put null null okay if that is true then go inside this if and do something else what let's say i want to insert something inside this account number is equals to here i have to put one is equal to y because i am initializing something correct and so account number is a text field by the way account number is a, a string a type of field right so you cannot put one two three four like this see you're gonna get an error you see the error illegal assignment from integer to string this error you're getting because this is integer and this field is basically a text field string field so you have to put here a uh, quotation so what i have done here i'm running the for loop which is uh, iterating over all the data that you have and i'm checking if the name is equal to uh, a sql test yes then i'm checking here if the account number equals to null yes if it is true then assign the account number what if you have to put else let's say there are two records okay what i'll do is i'll put one record so there are two record with name sql test for one record i'll put some account number let's say 999 save now i'm going to go and check in my code hey if you find the account number is null then only you update this one two three four else you have to write here else okay else just print the uh, account number suppose how do you print again system or debug right and uh, put the account number right is equals to plus how do i print the account number it just control c so we got it what i'm done i just have checked here if the name is sql test yes then check if that rec account number of that record is null or not if it is null then only you update it here else you print the account number right so this is how you write the query but do you think this line line number 13 is going to update the record no here you just have initialized one two three four in the account number field of that particular record whatever has been processed inside this for loop but do you think that update will happen no you're not updating you're not telling in the code that update the data so update is very simple you just have to write update this particular variable see that's it very simple as i told you update insert delete in salesforce is very easy you just have to write that update and this variable so understand this concept here this variable is actually having the current reference of that first record again so let's say you have five records in account object first record came inside the for loop and the name is not equal to sql test fine what what happened it will go to the second record second time again the for loop will run pick up the second record and this time let's say the name is sql test yes then it will check again what is the account number of that record null then it will update the account number as one two three four and then it will update that record see you are updating this variable this is the current reference variable this is the variable which is referencing to the record directly so if you update if you do any change with this variable it will actually update the data in the database so here you are just updating update command this is a command right this will help you to update that variable and this variable which is holding the reference of that record name soql test will actually go and update got it so what if i run this code what will be the output let me remove this system.debug and i'll just quickly save it Control e execute what do you think what should be the output just try to think what will be the output and see the output now okay executed the output is very simple my code will actually go and update the account number i'm going to go to the record right this is one record where do you think this record where the account number is 999 will be updated yes or no check out my code okay if you see my code i'm checking if the account number is blank i mean if it is null if it is null then only it will be updated to 1234 if not then it will just print so in this case it will print 
and if i go to debug right and debug only see this is printing account number 999 line number 18 right account number 999 is printing what about the other sql test data will it be updated let me go and check that so if i go to the other tab here okay see this account number was empty it was null so now if i refresh it will become one two three four correct i hope this code is pretty much clear right it is just checking a couple of if statements and based on that it is just updating the data by the way this is not a right way to write you know update comment okay because just understand this okay the why we should not write this update uh, we cannot discuss in detail about um, the same problem which is called governor limit in different video but understand this this update operations you should not write inside the for loop see technically there is no error because you have only five data what if you have 5000 records what if you have 5000 record when name is equal to sql test what will happen 5000 time this for loop will run 5000 time this update statement will fire and salesforce has something called governor limit salesforce says that hey if you are a salesforce developer if you're writing apex code then you cannot write you cannot do more than 150 dml operations means you cannot perform more than 150 time insert update or delete operation in one single transition which means this for loop will run more than 5000 time in more than 5000 time this for loop will try to execute this update statement in the moment it reach 151 it will give you an error so you'll hit the limit got it so salesforce it's a cloud platform okay because it is a cloud platform we as a developer don't have to put so much of effort if you see update it is just one statement that you have to write and because everything is into cloud it is just updating my data so definitely there's a, a good thing about cloud is, is coding is very much optimized you don't have to write so much of code if it is your java or like on-premises code right you have to write so much of code just to make the connection between the front end and the back end right but here just one statement so coding is easy but because it is working it is running on cloud right which is hosted in cloud right and the same server is been shared with multiple resources you have a limit you as a developer cannot go above that limit okay we will discuss about that limit later but this is not a right way to update you should never ever write update inside a for loop cool we're gonna see in the next video what will be the alternate of this how can you overcome this problem right so technically there's no problem but when you have many records that you have to deal with in your apex code this is where this problem will come okay you will your your, your apex code will not be executing properly okay so let's talk about this uh, how can you overcome this update statement which is there in the middle of your for loop in the next video and we will try to see how can you do delete operations through the same apex code okay see you in the next video